Oh. To my left, the gregarious Jalen Rose and the oh. obstreperous <laughs> Paul Pierce. I'll take that as a compliment. You and our captain, Even though I don't like that. <laughs> I'm very disruptive. I just wanted to see if anyone got that. Anyways, uh, we've got some thoughts. Any thoughts? What are we about to witness down there? We're going to witness some different coverages by the Portland Trailblazers, <laughs> you hope. I hope. You hope? That's what he hopes. We're going to see a team that acts like they belong and not happy to be there today. Aggressive Dame Dollar playing in his hometown. Boom. That's what you're going to see. <laughs> the NBA's baddest one-two punch beyond the arc came out swinging. Curry launches again. Thompson for three. Curry lighting it up. The anticipated battle of the backcourts quickly turned into target practice for the Splash Brothers. They were setting solid screens and they coming off, you know, shooting practice shots. Steph and Clay looked loose. Lillard and McCullum looked lost. Lillard, a little out of control, and throws it away. Sometimes I couldn't even get an attempt up, even if I was trying to force it. One squad clicking on all cylinders. The other stuck in neutral. McCollum drives it shot. The Trailblazers need to find their way now. I knew I was going game. It's the first to four, not the first to one. Blazers. Warriors, Game 2 next on ESPN. Welcome to NBA Countdown, presented by Mountain Dew. So on the one hand, you have the Warriors. They pummeled the Blazers by 22 on Tuesday night. Portland just didn't have an answer. Now on the other hand, Blazers did just about every single thing wrong, including 21 turnovers, and they were absolutely in this game, only down six after three quarters. The bottom line... The Warriors help serve. They do lead the series 1-0, but the games must go on. Let's hear from Damian Lillard. You know, a lot of uh, what our team is made up of is, is guys who um, had to overcome a lot of things to be here. So you put a group of guys who all share that together, and it's going to be what, what you know we built on. And um, Adversity, we've, we've all seen it. Um, doubt, we've all seen it uh, individually and as a group since we've been together. So. We always looking for that opportunity to respond. We always gonna bounce back, and um, tonight is an opportunity to do that. Chauncey, what do you tell this team coming into tonight? Well, for one, I'm 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 not gonna overreact to Game One. I mean, as a guy who's who's won a really really emotional road Game Seven, and had to play a Game One 48 hours later, mm -hmm. it's a tough turnaround. It really is. They looked physically tired. They looked mentally more than anything tired. And so my thing is just, listen, get better, watch the film. Like we said before, it, there will probably be some adjustments made. And you, you, you lay it on the line for game two. That's all, that's all you can really tell them. Lay it on the line for game two. I, I want to start off by saying, first off, that was one of the worst game plans I've ever seen defensively. Wow. If somebody remembers a worst game plan for a playoff game, then let me know it. Because I'm sure the way they let Curry come off and shoot the ball wide open from three in the pick and roll, was terrible but in saying that they should be very encouraged because for one they're not going to turn the ball over 21 times again i doubt that when you get to this level of the eastern conference finals you're playing oh, this is God. the best of the best you know how to take care of the ball at this point two dame is not going to be as bad as dame has been in game one and game seven of the last series he's a superstar he's a first team all nba last year will be first or second team this year and so I'm very encouraged and knowing I went into the fourth quarter last game, as bad as we played, we were only down six. 21 turnovers, though. How, how, how does that happen? Yeah, they played, had 21 turnovers, and they really were walking the ball up. They got to play a lot faster. They have guys in the half court. When you settle down, you can really double team off of and force the ball to them. In particular, a guy like Aminu, a starter, the only one hmm. that didn't have double-figure points. So... And also, I want to see them set the picks at a different level. Catch them by surprise. You can't just stand there at the top of the floor and wait for the screen, and they come off, they just trap it, and they blitz it. Dame is really good going downhill. Why not every now and then go up and set it in the backcourt? Go up and set it at half court. Now, all of a sudden, you have that big so far away from the basket, it gives them a chance to operate. You know what time it is? It's time to bring out the best, the mostest, the greatest. DB. It's Doris Burke. She's down there. What's going on with these teams tonight, DB? 
Hey, well, just to follow up on your three men and the comments they were making about the Trailblazer offense, Michelle, that was Terry Stotts' point. He said, when you play a team that's got the firepower of Golden State, your offense has to help you, and obviously the turnovers are death. But we're going to take a look at some footage that obviously everybody was talking about from game one, and it had to do exactly with what you were talking about, Paul Pierce. The amount of space given to Steph Curry on the pick and roll. You see the bigs from Portland are in drop, and obviously it's a problem. But the point Terry just made to us in our coaches meeting is the guards have got to do a better job of forcing them to a particular spot on the floor by being up. And let's not pretend that being closer as the big is going to solve all problems. Clint Camel Capella is an excellent defensive player. P.J. Tucker, excellent, closing on Steph. So it's not just a matter of proximity. Obviously, you want this kind of pressure on him, but this won't solve it in its entirety. And for them, it's an awful lot to do with what you were talking about, doing a better job with the turnovers, making sure they're getting to the second side of the floor and taking some time because this is a team that plays a little bit slower and likes to execute. And guys, before I toss it back, just one note on Kevin Durant. Uh, he is not expected to play tonight or the next three games. So if the Golden State Warriors uh, hope to win this series, they're going to do it in large part without Kevin Durant. Okay, so there you go. That's the news probably out for this series completely. Um, but by the way, Steph Curry without KD seems to thrive. Uh, averaging 35 points for 36 minutes. That's better than the 20 he was doing earlier. He's nearly doubled his three-point output. He was missing layups and he was missing all kinds of things when KD was on the floor and then we see him without Kevin Durant and it's like 2016 Steph Curry and it doesn't make sense. Why, why does that seem to happen to him? Well, first of all, you know, when, when KD's not playing, obviously all the attention, I mean, he takes a back seat. He defers sure. to KD when he plays. When KD's not on the floor, it's all about Steph. So when he doesn't have the ball, everybody's looking to find a way to get him the ball. And they know how to play with each other very, very well. So you can expect him to continue to be aggressive, continue to make shots. And I just, I just got to touch on one thing that Doris said. Please. After talking to Coach Stotts and saying that the guards have to do a better job of sending that guy. You, nobody in the league guards a pick and roll with one player. It just doesn't happen. You, you guard the pick and roll with five guys, but in particular two guys, the guys that are in the pick and roll. So whether they're icing it, sending it middle, whatever they're doing, that big guy has to have a presence at the point of the screen, no matter what. Well, here's what you can't do. You can't be stubborn. We all know that didn't work. Okay, so I know you feel like you want to tell the guards they got to do a better job of fighting over. But the last time I checked, Steph Curry is the best shooter with range that I've seen, and he also has one of the quickest releases that I've seen. So if Draymond or whoever actually sets the pick and the big is dropped, he's going to get a good look. It doesn't matter what type of effort the guards have. And you heard Dame say they got a lot of war warm up or practice shots. That was shade towards the game plan. They have to change that tonight. Which, you know, which version of this team do you like watching more? The KD version or the Steph Curry Well, version? this version is more fun to watch, but the KD version is the one that can win you a championship because when it comes down to game planning and you can't run your plays, it comes down to where can your best players make a play when it really counts. And that's what KD brings. That's what Steph brings. That's what Clay brings. But this team moves well without the ball. If Steph gets trapped, he relocates to another spot where he's coming off down screens, there's constant movement, phase screens, back screens, and the passing. You know, the passing is one of the best in the game between this team. So this version is probably more fun to watch, but this version won't win a championship without KD. How about this stat? Is that, Steph Curry is that a fact, though? made seven uncontested three-point shots in game one. <laughs> is that the unacceptable? Most in the last five postseasons. Yeah, that's unacceptable. Give me seven uncontested now. I can okay, come here. back. I can make a comeback. Honestly, if we... I can make a... Give me seven, seven uncontested. uncontested Hold yes. on. I'll make a comeback. If we send you down there with seven <laughs> minutes to go in the show... If you give this? me seven uncontested, I'll make at least four or five I mean, more. we have to make this happen. <laughs> so you talk about You'll this version of the Warriors. I'll make five of them. No, Might make one. Uncontested, Chauncey? No, no, no. no, no I'm no. talking to one of the great three-point shooters now. Don't get it twisted. Wow, that's let, let you'll make four. Three or four. Go on, Let me say this about this version of the Golden State Warriors. Steph version? Yes, fun to watch, and they move the ball a lot better, and they pass and cut, but they can't play in all phases. See, KD can isolate mid-range and still get you a high percentage shot and or play on the post. So can Boogie. Both of those guys are out. So yep. now if Portland suffocates the three-point line and get up like we hope they should, 
Now it forces the ball to other people and plays the percentages. Let and see if Iguodala can get going as he's pitching right there. What is Draymond Green going to do from the perimeter? You want Looney to be aggressive. Let Bogut feel like he's going to get a couple of shots. What you don't want is the Splash Brothers to consistently get open looks. Seven, huh? All right, time to check out who's arriving in. Six out of seven, oh. maybe. You by Wide Chevy open. Blazer. <laughs> Oh, C.J. McCollum, a blazer in a blazer. Yes, I'll be here all night. I wrote that myself. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, averaging a little over 21 points Man, on the road. When the last time you seen a guy walk in with a suit and tie? That's baller. That's that's. I'm really it's impressed. Right, right. By the way, he does it every.